Hello storytellers and welcome to the Create a Story You Love YouTube channel. Today's topic, we will be talking about the writer's strand of gold. This is uh, just kind of a topic I wanted to kind of talk about as I'm kind of diving into this, um, you know, the strand of gold, the vein of gold that, you know, each of us as artists really have. And uh, I've been discovering more of that as I've been writing my middle grade fiction series, the first book in that series, which is really inspired by my own childhood. Um, and so I've been diving deeper into memories and those things that I really loved and was drawn to as a child and those things that I feared, those things that, you know, made me worry or stay up, you know, shivering under the covers late at night, you know, those, those sorts of things. And so, you know, I wanted to, t to talk about the writer's strand of gold, which really what it is, what this is, uh, is that each of us as writers, um, we, you know, we dig deep inside ourselves to discover what really moves us deeply and what really resonates with our soul. Much like um, a daily exercise of physical walking, as writers, we walk across, you know, the bridges of our imagination, right? And we, we dive deep into our imagination daily. We are seeking the muse that wants to you know, bring to us the story that is already in seed form inside of us. That's at least how I see it. I, that's kind of how I picture it as I am writing. Um, with every new story I write, I, I feel like the story is already inside of us. And it's just wanting for us to tell it. You know, people say, writers say this in different terms. Sometimes they say, you know, um, I'm waiting for the muse, the you know, the writing muse to, you know, give me that inspiration or whatever. Um, but I feel like it's the stories inside of us and just wanting for us to, to, um, to tell it. Sometimes we have to see this first in our mind's eye. And then as we write the story, we are um, causing the, you know, basically the tangible or the physical form of our book to materialize and become very real, right? But it, it first we have to see it, right, in our mind's eye, in our imagination. And digging deeper into our muse um, and pulling the story out of ourselves means that we need to be authentic and real as we show up to the page. So all our scars, hurts, pains, fears, losses, triumphs, you know, love, uh, those things that we don't love, <laughs> uh, that that's really where our greatest writing is found. And and sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, right, is to really go there. Sometimes I've found that hard for myself. Um, you know, when we use the words creative self-expression, what that really means is that our, our creative writing self flows from, you know, our inner self into expression. Right. So if your real and authentic self is hidden from view, you can begin to get to know your true self through writing. And I really I really uh, believe that because uh, as I continue to write books, I, I find the longer I write, the more I get to know um, more of my true, authentic self. And uh, so, uh, you know, I encourage you to just to continue writing because you will find um, that truest, um, authentic self inside of you as you keep writing. Now, you might be worried that your own life isn't very interesting. So how could you take inspiration from your ordinary life? And I understand because I think the same of my own life, right? Uh, but I, I honestly believe that as you write down what inspires you, and as you remember some stories from your childhood or, or people that even interacted with you in your childhood memories or, te or teenage memories, um, that you will begin to discover more of who you are, which in turn will really inform your writing. Um, I've, I've really noticed that um, writing down facts and your reaction to them will help you begin to get clear on your version of who you are of who you truly are and therefore what inspires you as a writer. For example, I have looked back at my own childhood 
uh, as the youngest child of 11 growing up on a farm in northern British Columbia. And the things that stand out most for me is how much time I spent, you know, after the chores were done, <laughs> either by myself thinking or playing with my animal friends. You know, this was just part of my childhood. And I loved, I loved all the animals, um, you know, whether it was dogs, cats, horses, sometimes even goats and baby lambs when, you know, when we had them. I mean, we had pigs and cows too, but I never had as much affection for them as, as the other animals, lol. Uh, but, uh, you know, those things stand out. Um, and I remember, you know, that fondly. The other thing that stands out from my childhood is, is the adventures we would have, you know, whether it was learning to ride the motorbike for the first time when my feet couldn't even touch the ground, <laughs> you know, when I sat on the motor, the back of the motorbike and I could, my feet couldn't even touch the ground, or um, even chasing the bull who tried to come after me um, and my dog when we were bringing the cows home from the pasture, or um, skating on the creek in the wintertime. Um, even though my sister fell through the ice the one time and got her out. But, you know, just things like that. They kind of stick in your mind, right? And so there was a lot of things that, you know, very happy memories, but there was also things that I'm very fearful of um, as, you know, as a child. You know, fear of the dark was a big one for me. Um, fear of wild animals um, was another fear you know, so <laughs> I learned to be a little careful on that front. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there was also lots of adventure. Um, but however, uh, another thing that stands out for me from my childhood is that I had such a longing for acceptance and belonging and just for who I was. And so when I, I look back at the books I've written so far, I'm not finished writing, but when I look at the books I've written so far, um, I can see these different themes pop up in different books, like adventure. Um, I, you know, definitely there uh, in my first two historical romance uh, books, they are filled to the brim with <laughs> adventure. It's very fast paced. It's almost could be say, could you could almost say it was a, a historical thriller if there is such a thing. Um, but it's very fast paced as the heroine is being chased by the terrorist group, the Black Hand. And, um, you know, those fears, I think, from my childhood became were alive to me as I wrote those uh, those first two books in that series. However, it's it it shifts a little bit from when I with with the pen name sweet romance books that I write, because over and over again I write about a heroine who is longing for acceptance and belonging and love, and in most of those stories they are small town romances with the character having a dog or cat or some kind of animal that she just adores, you know. Uh, and so this is also something, right, a, a theme that is showing up. And as I'm writing this first book in my middle grade fiction adventure series, which is, you know, a story in a series that's inspired by my family and my childhood, I am beginning to see um, childhood fears. Uh, pop up and a longing for acceptance and belonging. These are showing up in my heroine, you know, the nine-year-old orphan girl, uh, Kanata. And so, you know, you know, I get no big surprise that this, these themes and these, um, you know, are showing up in, in the books because that was very real even back in my memories. That was very real for me. So, I want to encourage you, even in your own, you know, in your own writing process, um, to write down a few facts from your childhood memories. And the reason for doing this is it will help you really uncover your real voice, because often what emerges from this exercise is a true understanding of your writing and, uh, you know, your originality, you know, specifically what is true for you. Uh, because basically what will happen is you'll get a clearer picture of what your writer's strand or vein of gold is. Um, because when we can unearth the memories inside of us, we get even greater access to a broader um, capacity of creativity. I think maybe that's the right word. Uh, and these memories become inspiration 
and it really motivates us to um, dive deeper into that creativity, if that makes sense. Um, and at least I, I feel that's happened to me. And so I just feel like it would be the same for, you know, if you're a writer and you're, and you're listening to this, I feel like that would be the same. So unearth those memories, uncover those memories, because it will give you even greater access uh, and more to, you know, a broader capacity of creativity inside of you. Um, when I was reading Julia Cameron's book um, titled The Vein of Gold, um, she shares of a time when she learned from film director Martin Ritt, who gave her uh, a wonderful uh, idea of finding that real source of resonance. Uh, and he was talking specifically about actors, but I feel like it could apply to writers. I really do. He, he gave her uh, this tip on actors and actresses and finding their brilliance. He said, all actors have a certain territory, a certain range they were born to play. If you cast an actor within that vein, he will always give you a brilliant performance. Of course, you can always cast an actor outside his vein of gold. If you do, the actor can use craft and technique to give you a very fine performance, but never a performance as brilliant as when he is working in his vein of gold. So I, I found that very interesting. Um, and, you know, looking back at different actors, like we can see Jim Carrey in the movie Dumb and Dumber. I mean, he shines in comedy, right? Or, um, you know, Meryl Streep, I thought she did an excellent job on that movie um, out of Africa. I really liked that one. I liked her in that one. And so cross that over to um, writing. You know, some stories that are done by writers are... Um, how would you say they get more recognition, more, more people talking about them more. It's like, there's a, how would you say it's like, there's a, um, the light is shining more on a certain piece of work that they have done. And, you know, I, I wonder if that sometimes, if that isn't their sort of their strand of gold, uh, shining out like maybe that is one of those things that has one of those themes that really is from their um, you know who they really are right I, you know so these are the things I think about and uh, I um, so I, I believe that that same thing that it can apply to actors also applies to writers um, so I, I encourage you to try to find uh, and look for your own strand of gold. You know, write about things that inspire you, that you care about, and that you think about. You know, I feel like it's important to write about those things that you're really interested in, and not what you feel like you should write about, right? Because, um, you know, that, it doesn't mean that it's, you know, it's, it's inspiring if it's something that you should write about, but if it's something that you really want to write about, I feel like there's more passion there. Right, and you'll probably get a better response from readers uh, with that. Uh, and I, and another thing to try is take a look at what movies or books you are inspired to watch or to read. Um, it, you know, chances are that you'll discover that those books or movies are in some way related to the themes um, that you have discovered in your own story. You know, as, as you've written down your memories, uh, and so that's a great starting place. Uh, is to go back to childhood memories and write down just some, it could be that you're just even writing facts, you know, just writing the facts of, you know, this happened and then this happened, but you might find in there something is uncovered even as you are writing the facts of your childhood story. So I, I want to encourage you to do that. And um, I think you will find the true expression of who you are as a writer by doing that. And then you will know and uncover your own strand of gold and have a greater level of true authenticity as you come to write to the page. And so I, I hope that some of those ideas helped you today. And if you find this video helpful to you, please hit the like button below and subscribe and um, leave a comment below this video. And we'll see you next time.